Um, that certainly brings out another issue regarding um, cancer. Uh, we, we do have a very poor, uh, like you said, uh, cancer diagnostic and can cancer diagnosis uh, facility uh, in Nepal. Um, what about the uh, care and treatment? If someone is diagnosed with cancer, uh, what are um, basic steps that people can take, uh, whether they, they can be catered here in Nepal as far as care and treatment goes, or they, whether they need to go outside of the country to get a treatment? And what are the challenges in care and treatment part of cancer? Uh, regarding the treatment part, Care and treatment part, as I already told you, apart from few hospitals in Kathmandu Valley and uh, uh, some uh, national hospitals in Bharatpur or maybe some other places like Pokhara or Nepal Ganj, we don't have a cancer center in the country where I just told in the beginning that we might have a burden of 50,000 cancer cases in a year. But in Nepal, we, I think we hardly have 200, 250 beds available exclusively for cancer patients. So you can see for 50,000 cancer, cancer patients, we have a dedicated bed of 200 to 300 in Nepal. That's a rough case. So you can see uh, it's a, the thing is very poor when we take uh, as a whole in Nepal. But when, if, you, if you want to take uh, the incidence in, incidence in Kathmandu, it's uh, not that bad. It's not, it's now it's not necessary to go to India or some other places for diagnosis of most of the cancers. I don't say every cancer. And also, it's not necessary to go to India or other countries for treatment of cancer because in higher centers in Kathmandu and some other, some like Bharatpur Cancer Hospitals, we now ha are treating not only the solid tumors, we are treating uh, leukemias and other, all the related cancers in, in Nepal itself, so it's not necessary. But this is only for the privileged few and only for a certain population in Nepal. So if you take as a, as in, a, in a whole, as a general, the condition is very, very bad, but if you take... Uh, uh, like uh, whether we can do it in Nepal or not, we can do it, but uh, but not available for all and not affordable for all. Mm. So um, the other uh, part certainly comes, and 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 I think uh, you know just by looking at some of the uh, the the cancer situation in Nepal, uh, this certainly might be another area of our challenges, and that is. Um, uh, long-term support uh, for cancer survivors. Uh, what do you see uh, as far as support goes, long-term support goes, for cancer survivors in Nepal? And uh, do you think there is any systematic, coordinated effort uh, to have a institutionalized long-term support for cancer survivors? Uh, this is one of the areas I've been, even uh, like we might have some uh, treatment system in Nepal, but for the palliative cares, we still lag far, far behind. What, hap what is uh, now in Nepal, we don't have a, any, any palliative care dedicated program. And uh, so, uh, so uh, we, it's very difficult because once the patient comes and the patient is not in, a, not in a curable state, he needs the treatment or palliative care for throughout his life. But we don't have that palliative care system in Nepal. We have just a uh, few years back introduced morphine tablets. So we are taking steps, but still the palliative, this uh, kind of support is very, very, uh, very uh, not existent. And I think not more than 100 beds, maybe not even 100 beds in Nepal, uh, whole, whole of Nepal for palliative cares. We, have, we lack expertise who are who has uh, degrees in palliative care. So palliative care is something is not known, known uh, by many of the physicians or many of the doctors in, the, in, the, in this uh, oncology field. And so uh, palliative care is something which we should focus, I think, uh, very, very soon because to alleviate the pain of the, and suffering of the, uh, pa of the patients. And for this, uh, we have this, uh, just uh, last year, this year, uh, early this year, we have, uh, we have established one Nepal Cancer Support Group uh, this is an NGO which uh, I co-founded with Dr. Sudeep, and uh, it is a cancer support group which uh, is basically uh, tries, uh, which uh, accumulates all the cancer patients, their family members, volunteers, and try to form a support group uh, among the cancers. We are plan we are now in the step of developing a breast cancer support group, and so as, and in the future maybe we will be uh, going for other cancers also. Apart from this, we also have been doing. Uh, uh, many uh, uh, awareness and early detection uh, 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 detection of cancers and uh, and we give uh, lectures to various people we give training for breast self examination 
and we have also been working for advocacy of uh, breast cancer related of uh, cancer related issue uh, of uh, topics so i hope uh, the small small respect that the nepal cancer relief society is doing that our ngo is doing so i think this will he help uh, help us uh, do uh, work in case of uh, early diagnosis and palliation and long term treatment now that's a wonderful uh, uh, thing to to uh, to know that uh, you guys are putting such an effort to um, uh, basically address the gap in terms of long term support with your ngo nepal cancer support group uh, now, I, I would just like to backtrack a little bit and kind of talk about uh, our interest. Uh, uh, as you know, CMDN is a research institute, and we focus highly. We, we are focused on clinical epidemiology of various prevalent diseases in, in Nepal and uh, surrounding area, to that matter. And uh, in that context, I would like to um, get a sense of what kind of research is needed um, in Nepal uh, so that we can have a better cancer preventive programs uh, and uh, thereby perhaps advise uh, policy makers in, in making um, uh, national programs to kind of address uh, uh, the issue of prevention of cancer in Nepal. Uh, this is very one very important uh, thing that we should uh, this, uh, thank you for raising this important topic. The thing is in Nepal what we know about cancer is from the foreign data. We don't have a data of our own. Uh, we only have data of few hospitals, which maybe treat few hundred, few thousand patients. But we, in Nepal, what we need is at the at this uh, juncture is a program uh, like a uh, population-based registry program, where uh, the cancer from all over the country, like in the population, which in which population, which cancer is. Uh, detected more, what are the risk factors, what are the um, epidemiological causes, what are the age, age uh, groups, and these kind of things are the, are, I think, epidemiological and uh, incidence. This, this research, I think, is the most important, is the in demand of the day now. Because before we know what kind of cancer is, of, is uh, prevalent in which area, there is no point in targeting any specific uh, program for that area. So first, I think, what we should do is uh, do a research uh, in, the, in the field of epidemiology, and incidence uh, of uh, cancer cases. And from about, uh, apart from that, we should also um, uh, do the research in case uh, in like which are the main causative, uh, what are the main causative organs or what are the causative factors for those kind of cancers. So what I saw in my research that I saw was in a rye population in, in, uh, of Kathmandu, and there were high prevalence of, uh, of uh, liver cancer. So we should uh, and uh, we should uh, we should try to find out why is uh, why in Rai population or Mongol population have higher incidence of uh, liver cancer. So those kind of t cases that we uh, can be taken up and then we can do uh, at the at the beginning we can do uh, incidence based and secondly we can do the what are the etiological based uh, research. I think these are the two areas that at the beginning we can focus on. Uh, now that <clears throat> that certainly gives us some of the uh, the priority areas in terms of research, but uh, if you were to um, uh, take an initiative in uh, cancer prevention and also uh, cancer treatment in Nepal, what would would you say is the top priority uh, overall? Uh, for the cancer uh, in in cancer area in oncology area because we should always go with the volume because in Nepal as we know in male it's the lung head and neck and stomach and these all these three can be prevented in case of lung and head and neck if you can uh, stop tobacco uh, we can uh, decrease it by a, a very high percentage especially in case of stomach also uh, we can by diets also plays a very very important role and especially in case of uh, cervix because this is the number one cancer in case uh, in female in Nepal, so we should now it is a high time that we should try to find out uh, the SPB uh, SPB prevalence in uh, female in Nepal, so that we we would know why is this case and this cancer the number one cancer in Nepali population. So this uh, and especially and, and uh, being uh, breast cancer being the second most common, common cancer, we should uh, try to find out why apart from gen genetics that we already know. Why in Nepali population and uh, is this cancer is growing? Maybe the lifestyle, maybe the uh, fa fa uh, 
uh, fatty food, maybe weight. So we should uh, try to focus, I think, on lung and cervix at the first, and uh, secondly on head and neck, breast, because these are the main uh, main uh, cancers that is affecting neighborly population. Um, that that certainly gives us uh, some of some idea in terms of where we should head, and in, uh, in cancer prevention in Nepal. Um, I uh, would like to thank uh, Dr. Bijes. Uh, uh, Gimire again for uh, coming to our studio and uh, and enlightening us with uh, the topic of oncology in Nepal in, uh, about cancer and the challenges and, and, and some of the priority areas that we should really focus on. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bijes from on behalf of the Center for Molecular Dynamics Nepal, CMDN, and KIPS 98.3. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope to talk to you soon. Uh, thank you, Divesh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about cancer because now we, it is time that we should uh, focus uh, uh, even in cancer because it's rising alarmingly, uh, like with the global trend. And, and lastly, what I want to say is that in a country like Nepal, where the treatment is very, very difficult, where it's very costly, I think we should focus on preventive aspects. We should now focus on screening, mass screening, and uh, awareness. So I think uh, if you can focus on awareness and screening, I think we can detect lots of cancers and lots of burdens of cancer in Nepal. Thank you so much for inviting me here. And thank you, Keep FN, for inviting me here. Thank you. All right. Thank you.